Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of Bucket for Beginners. In this episode, we're going to go over if statements and operators. But first, we're going to go over the homework. So, I asked you guys to make a public method called add10 that returned an, a return an integer and the parameters was a double named what was it named? number. And then it in the actual method, it casted it to an integer and then it added 10 to it and returned the integer. So let's do it now. It'll be a public, it's gonna return an, an integer called add 10. It takes a double named number. It's going to, uh, we're gonna make an int return number and this is gonna be equal to number plus 10, but we need to cast this to an integer. Then we're going to return the return number. And that is it. There's also another way you could do this. You could return number plus 10 and immediately cast it to an integer like that. And there we go. Um, you guys understand how this works. I don't think I need to. I, need, I don't gotta waste time printing it out. So that is the method. We'll, we'll leave that there just for now, just for example purposes. So we're gonna get into if statements and operators. Now, an if state, we'll do if statements first. That's basically as simple as it sounds. It says if something is true or something is, uh, yeah, if something is true, then do this code, and you, they can also be an else. So we're going to put this into a method. We're going to do a private um, boolean, and we're going to call it. Actually, we'll do the one that I did in the previous video. Is this greater than 500? And we're going to pass in an integer number. We don't like numbers in there. Then 50. So we're going to do if. And actually, the operators are going to be kind of all blended in. There's a, quite a few operators. There's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, and e uh, equal to, and there's also the modulus. Um, modulus is, well, then there's also addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. So we're going to say, oh, that's so ugly. We're going to comment this out. If the number we pass in is greater than 50, no. so this is our if statement. This is the condition. Open up. If the number is greater than 50, we're going to return true. Else, we're going to return false. So basically what this means is, if it's greater than 50, do this. If if this condition is not met, it's going to skip over this code. It's going to jump right down to the else statement, and then it's going to return false. If there was no else statement, it would just say, is this greater than 50? No, it's not. Skip to the end. This method's over, and that's it. And the reason this is throwing an error is because this if this isn't greater than 50, it's not going to get to the return statement. And every method has to return, or every method that has a return type has to return something regardless. So that's why it needs to say else return false. And that is it for the if statement. Uh, you can also do if it's not equal to 50, you can say if it's, if it's less than 50, if it's less than or equal to. You can say um, if it's equal to, notice how one, e I'm trying to find where I assign, here we go. One equal sign is an assignment operator. It means it's assigning the thing that's returned by the get logger method to this variable. The double equal sign is comparing two things. If number, if the value of number is equal to 50, then do that. You're also going to see this with materials, like uh, material dot stone. If material, or we'll say if if it, if there's an event, if somebody breaks a block, we're going to say if the um, if the block they broke 
which would be a, a material type is equal to material dot stone then do something that'll be a little bit later on you will I'll explain how to do all that stuff with materials so that is it for if statements um, and actually adds operators too oh the modulus operator you're not going to use this too much this is basically if it's um it's a remainder operator so if you were to do 50 or no we'll do 6 divided by 3 it's going to give you uh, 2 6 divided by 3 is 2 if you did 6 divided by um, 5 or no that's a bad example we'll, we'll do 10 10 divided by 3 is going to give you one because it's going to do it's going to get as close as it can to the um, to this number so it's going to do three times what gets you closest to ten three times three gets you nine right now whatever's left over between the number that it gets and the number that you like the the nine that it got and the number that you started with is what's returned this is helpful for checking if a number is even. So if you do, if 10, um, uh, let's see, if 10 mod 2 is equal to 0, then it's got to be even. Because um, if, it, if, it, uh, if it divides evenly, then it's going to return as a 0. If you try to divide 10 by 3, it's going to give you 1. Or no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. If you d divide 11 by 2, it's going to give you um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It's going to give you 1 as well, which is not going to be equal to 0. Therefore, it's going to be odd. Um, like I said, you're not, don't get too caught up on that. You're not going to use that thing much. But if you see it, you now know what it does. Last thing I need to mention is the dot equals method. Pay very close attention to this. This is extremely important. If you are comparing two strings or you're seeing if, if uh, yeah if you're comparing one string to another you need to use a method called dot equals you can't you can't have string high and string by you can't say if high is equal to by it's gonna say you can but you can't the way that you compare two strings is you use a method that's written called equals. This method returns a true or false, and it returns a boolean. It's from the string class, and it's going to take another string. So if it's equal to by, then do that. So the dot equals method is um, is for strings. It's also for a few other things that could be. It depends on what the on what the variable is. For for things like materials, you can use the equals equals sign. Um, usually, you're just going to use this for strings. We'll keep that in mind. Um, if uh, if an issue comes up in future code where we have to use the, uh, the the dot equals for something else, I'll explain exactly why. Or if you have a question, you can ask me. So that's very important. Remember that um, there's also equals ignore case where um, if we have if this is capital B Y E um, and this is lowercase B Y E and we say if high is equal is ignore case to buy this is gonna come back as true this is so it's gonna go into this code this is gonna be this is gonna be right because it's gonna ignore the case of B and say is buy equal to buy yes it is if this wasn't the case, if it was just equals, this is gonna not. This is gonna return. This is gonna not be true. So it's gonna skip this and it's gonna go right to the else. Now you can also have nested if statements, which means an if within an if. It's like ifception. So you can have if high equals by, if high. Um, there's a method called length. Dot length. Almost every single object has this, or every string. I'm sorry, every string has this method. This is gonna, or every string and like, um, like an array which holds a bunch of stuff. You can get the length of it. This is gonna return an, an integer. You'll see by length returns an int. But so it's gonna get you how long this is. So by is gonna be three. If high dot length is equal to three, go into here. You can have as many as you want. If um, by dot length is not equal to five. 
then I don't know. We'll set i equal to blah, blah, blah. and then you can put an else for each one of these. So it's going to say if i equals by, yes it does, or no, actually no, it doesn't. If uh, it does now, if i equals by, yes, okay, go to here. If i dot length is equal to three, yes it is. Go to here. If the length of by is, equal, is not equal to five, which it's not because it's three, then go to here. If the length of by is not equal to five. We can open up our else. See, the reason that I put the brackets down here, some people like to do it like this. They put them outside. Um, for me, it's easier to tell which one I'm looking at because it all lines up. This else goes to this one. If you want to put an else here, um, i is equal to blah, blah, blah. by is equal to. Now you can easily tell which else goes with which if. And that, and put something in there, and that's it. So see, so you can see this else, this one, and this one. And that is about it for uh, if statements and operators. I know this one ran a little bit longer than I wanted, but I got that info out there. So next episode, we're going to go over arrays. Do not be afraid of arrays if you've heard them before. They're very, very simple, very simple to understand. And after that, you'll have all the tools that you need to make your first command. And the video after that will be explaining just that. We'll do some fun things with commands. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to give you some homework like usual. I would like you to. Mm, let me think. I'd like you to make a method that's private. It's only for this class. And it returns a string. Or no, I'm sorry, it returns a boolean. And um, the method name is combined length is greater than. 10. Okay? Combined length is greater than 10. I know it's long. Um, and then the parameters for it is going to be one string named string 1 and one string, or er, a second string named string 2. And in the actual code, what you're going to do is you're going to get the length of string 1 and string 2. You're going to add them together you're going to see if that is um, is greater than 10. If it is, return true. And if it's not, return false. And that is it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Add me on Skype if you have any questions. Comment and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Oh,